From the QWERTY keyboards to predictive technology on our cell phones, Radical Machines Chinese in the Information Age is the first ever exhibit of artifacts that explores the link between the Chinese language and its influence on modern technology at the San Diego Chinese History Museum. This has been the most popular show that we've had at the museum to date. Uh, and again, we're really, um, SDCHM is so proud to be the first museum to showcase this show before it travels the world. The centerpiece of the exhibition, this 1970s double pigeon brand Chinese typewriter, a typewriter with no keyboard, just metal slugs with mirrored images of Chinese characters. This is my pride and joy. In the case of Chinese typewriting, no mass manufactured Chinese typewriter ever had a keyboard. They all had a tray bed of characters. Uh, in this case, on this machine, it was a selection of the most commonly used Chinese characters, uh, 2,450 of them. Thomas Mullaney, associate professor at Stanford University, says he traveled to 15 different countries in the span of a decade to build this collection. I think it's fascinating because the history of information technology that we have come to know or understand, the history of IBM, of Apple, of Steve Jobs, of Bill Gates, seems universal, but in fact it's an incredibly partial uh, history. It excludes from the history uh, roughly a quarter of humanity and one of the most important uh, languages in human history, human civilization, and this is the Chinese language. And it excludes it uh, for a simple fact, and that is that the Chinese language is not alphabetic. Mullaney says discrimination of the Chinese language can be traced back to the creation of telegraphy. This is the first moment in which a new technology, uh, new information technology, telegraphy, is being invented that is so fundamentally biased towards alphabetic languages that suddenly the Chinese language, by no fault of its own, finds itself in this structurally in an unequal situation. And people, and this is the really crazy part, is people begin to believe because of that that there's something wrong with Chinese. Uh, that it's inherently slower, that it's inherently incompatible with modern life and so forth. Engineers from all over the world came together to solve the puzzle of building a Chinese typewriter. The solution, a word processor like this one from the 1980s. It was the beginning of the predictive technology that we use on computers and cell phones today. So they had figured out for the first time in history how we use a keyboard with so few buttons on it to produce a language that is not alphabetic and has tens of thousands of characters. They had basically solved the puzzle. This is a show that is not just about China. This is not just about the Chinese typewriter. It's about looking at how another half of the world tried to solve a very complex puzzle. And understanding that we live in a time where our cultures and our worlds are colliding and that we need each other to solve really intricate problems like creating predictive text. All of these things are intermixed and we are not just a one standalone country or culture. Hey NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.